Hey YouTubers, finally the video that I've been promising for the last week. Um, finally got my uncle up here. Uh, he's sitting across from me now. But um, I today I'm going to smoke a, a pipe that one of my other uncles gave me. It's a uh, pipe he's had for 45 years. A nice little drugstore pipe. Smokes pretty well. And then I'm going to have for my uh, tobacco, Boswell Sweet Tea. Just a nice kind of light afternoon tobacco. But um, I'd also like to congratulate Stuart Sink on his British Open win. As you know, I'm a pretty avid golfer so that's a big win I'm really sad about Tom Watson though I was really rooting behind him the whole time and then acknowledging um, the death of a fellow pipe smoker and newscaster Walter Cronkite um, our our family would like to extend our condolences you know to his family and we hope that all is well so now to the interview okay everybody this is my uncle Al hi everybody <laughs> he's uh He's from um, up in Westchester in New York, and um, he's, uh, he's the one that got me into this wonderful hobby of uh, mine. So, like, when did you start smoking a pipe, Uncle Al? Oh, way, way back in the 30s, when I was about 16 or 17 years old. Very, very lightly, of course, but with a, with a pipe that I found in a, in a tobacco store along with Walnut Tobacco. <laughs> it was a big deal. I think the whole thing cost me about a dollar and a half. A dollar and a half, wow. <laughs> and um, let's see, what what was your favorite pipe from back then? My my favorite pipe was not actually selected in terms of quality pipes because back then in the 30s, you know, there was a depression and you didn't have a lot of money to kind of kick around for some of the most expensive and, and well-known uh, pipes. And if you found yourself a pipe that smoked well, and you didn't have to pay a lot of money for it, you did that. Of course, as time went on and I was able to go to work and start making some dollars, I was able to begin to search for the pipes that had a good reputation and I know felt good in the hand and tasted good when you <laughs> with tobacco. And so um, you were in World War II over in India. Yep. And that's when you kind of went out of touch for it a little bit because it was expensive over there to, you know, it was cheaper to have cigarettes. It was because the, the United States Army supplied cartons of cigarettes for about a dollar, a dollar and a half a carton in those days. And which pipe did Aunt Miriam um, send over to you? Ah, now you see, now you're getting to the good <laughs> stuff. Uh, she must have liked me a little bit because she went out and got me a Dunhill pipe. Wow. And they were really special pipes. And this was a, a little pipe that she felt I could carry around and keep in my mouth without it breaking my teeth or anything because <laughs> it was nice and light. Nice little uh, black uh, in, in, indented root bowl with a, a lovely stem. Really nice little pipe. Okay, and back then what was your favorite blend of tobacco? Back then, my favorite blend of pipe tobacco was any I could get hold of in India. <laughs> <laughs> and later on in um, your pipe smoking years, what was your favorite blend? I know it was an English blend. You like the English oh, style uh, blends. There was an English style blend that I got from Dunhill. It was sort of mixed up to the proportions that we agreed on. Right. At that time, there was a Dunhill store in New York City on Fifth Avenue, uh, which would have uh, several bowls of different kinds of tobacco, which they'd let you sort of sniff at and sort of taste a little bit, and then mix them together to make a little compound that was strictly yours in your name, and they would fill that for you upon demand. Wow. And so, um, what kind of got you interested in pipe smoking? To, I'll t I gotta tell you the truth. It had nothing to do with my sudden uh, great elaboration of what's wonderful. So my brother smoking pipes looked pretty good to me. <laughs> <laughs> he was my big brother little bit older than I was and um, so what I used to do without his knowledge I think he never said anything because <laughs> I'd steal one of his pipes oh. and fill it with, with whatever tobacco he had in the bowl there and smoke it clean it out take a pipe clean and clean it so he wouldn't know that anybody actually smoked and put it back in the rack and pretend to be innocent <laughs> and so what did Grandma Anna think about you smoking a pipe did she ever talk about that with you or you know, as a matter of fact, I think she probably looked a little bit askance at my starting to smoke because, you know, I was, I was pretty young. Although, listen, for your friends, 
In those days, you know, the supervision of kids was not quite as strict as, right. as it is now. Uh, and uh, they didn't pay all that much attention to some of the activities. I don't think she approved of smoking at all. But, uh, you know, I was one of her favorites, so she didn't say too much. <laughs> it's like she said about stooping, once you start, you can't stop. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... You were telling me earlier that, I mean, you had a pipe, like, in every every other hour of the day. Is that correct? It got to that point where I had a pipe with me all the time. Uh, it, was, it happened mostly after I got back from the Army. Right. And uh, I started to smoke a pipe seriously, and uh, therefore I didn't smoke cigarettes much at all. After a while, I stopped smoker, smoking cigarettes entirely. And so all I did was carry around a pouch of tobacco and a pipe. <laughs> and the problem was that when you ran out of pipe tobacco, it wasn't always easy to run around the corner and get pipe tobacco, but right. you could always run around the corner and get a pack of cigarettes. Right. And so intermittently I would smoke some cigarettes as well. And uh, within about... Well, four or five years from the time I started to teach at the college, I was smoking a pipe almost exclusively. Wow. And I was beginning to accumulate a bunch of them. How, like at the peak of your collection, how many did you have? I think that I counted up to about 50 at one point. Wow. 50 pipes. Yeah. What happened to some of them, I... I, I'm still trying to investigate for you. <laughs> and then um, I think this is going to be our last question. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, oh, yeah. Any advice to, like, new pipe smokers like me or the ones that are going to be watching this video? Absolutely. You know, the, you keep hearing from everybody, do things in moderation. Well, this is very, very, very important. Pipe smoking can be very satisfying to an extent. But it does entail certain kinds of difficulty that can ensue. You can um, ruin your bite. Your teeth can get uh, uh, affected and loosened. You can uh, develop uh, some really stark burns inside of your palate. And uh, so don't keep a pipe in your mouth at all times. Smoke a pipe once in a while to get the great satisfaction. Enjoy it. And after a while, you'll find that it's even more enjoyable when you smoke it uh, once in a while rather than, than all the time. Right. Because your mouth begins to become insensitive to what you're experiencing. And as uh, one of the guys on YouTube said, pleasure before precision. Pleasure before precision and precision and pleasure in moderation. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Al. You did great. And regards to all your friends, Danny is one of my all-time favorites, guys, <laughs> so you can, you can really pay attention. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Al. You're welcome. So there you have it, YouTubers. That was the uh, interview with my Uncle Al, who got me started with the pipe and is keeping me going with it. So hope all is well, and uh, enjoy your smoke.